If you're going to play music from one of these, you need to accessorize. To listen to a music file, you don't need very much. You need the file and you need some sort of device to listen to it with. With CDs, you really don't need much more. You need the CD, you need some type of CD player, and you need something to listen to it with. But with vinyl, there are all sorts of accessories available to help enhance your listening experience. In this video, I'm going to go through a number of them and tell you what they do. I'm going to start with a brush. A record brush is an essential accessory for vinyl playback. This is an anti-static carbon fiber brush that I acquired through Sleeve City. Vinyl records hold static electricity, especially in arid climates. An anti-static brush helps neutralize the static charge so the dust particles don't stick to the record. Instead, they are attracted to the carbon fiber bristles on the brush. To use this brush, turn on the turntable and hold the brush so the bristles penetrate into the grooves. Very slowly move the brush to the center of the record, then lift up on the brush once all the bristles are in the center. You can easily see how much dust this brush picked up. I have two other brushes that I occasionally use. This Audio Technica brush was part of a wet cleaning kit but the brush works great for dry cleaning as well. Also, I have a discount brush that I acquired as part of a multi-pack through All Electronics Corporation years ago. Make sure dust is removed from your brush before you use it again. One device that can enhance a brush's ability to pick up dust is a zero stat gun. Hold the gun within 12 inches of the record and slowly squeeze the trigger. This ionizes the air above the record with a positive charge. Then slowly release the trigger. This ionizes the air with a negative charge. I do this process three times over three regions of the record. For the final squeeze, I place a zero stat gun directly over the label and squeeze it in. I then position the gun next to the housing of the turntable for the final release. Passing over the record with the brush again, more dust particles were picked up than by using the brush alone. In a previous video, I talked about the Spin Clean Basin Cleaner. Having a wet cleaning device is important for removing not only dirt that's embedded in the grooves, but also grease from fingerprints and other sources. Click the card above to see the full video. The link is also in the description. Not only should your records be clean for optimal playback, your stylus should be too. The needle can pick up dirt and lint as it travels through the record grooves. A brush will remove this dirt and lint. You can also get a wet clean stylus care kit that does even better at cleaning your needle. There are three popular types of turntable mats. A felt mat came with my GLI Pro SL2500 and this design is often preferred by DJs, but dust can easily collect on the mat and end up on your vinyl. My favorite is this old rubber mat that came with a Pioneer turntable that I no longer own. A third type of mat that is popular for its vibration dampening properties is a cork mat. I primarily listen to 33 and a third RPM LP records, but occasionally I like to listen to a 7 inch 45 RPM single. The hole in the middle of these records is 1.5 inches, so it is important to have a spindle hole adapter for playback. Most turntables come with this accessory, but if yours does not, adapters are affordable. When playing back records, it's important to make sure that your turntable is level. This can be done with a low cost bubble level like this one. When the bubble is in the center, your turntable is level. Every turntable cartridge has an optimal tracking force. For example, my Shure M97XE is 1.25 grams without the brush engaged and 1.75 grams with the brush engaged. You can set this tracking force using the counterweight on the tone arm. Set the tone arm to a neutral balance and set the gauge to zero. Now turn the gauge until the appropriate tracking force is reached. 
However, these counterweights are not always accurate. To ensure that you have the desired tracking force, you can purchase a scale that accurately measures the force. Zero out the scale with no weight on it, then place the needle on the scale. As you see, my counterweight is set to about 1.25, but when I place the needle on the scale, it reads 1.17. I then adjust the counterweight until I get 1.25 on my scale. Many turntables have an anti-skate adjustment. A rule of thumb is that the anti-skate should be set to the same number as the tracking force, but the spring used for anti-skate adjustment can be weak or worn, preventing optimal adjustment. When the anti-skate adjustment is optimized, the tone arm should not push the needle toward either side of the record groove. To ensure that the anti-skate adjustment is balanced, you can use a vinyl blank with no grooves or the blank side of an EP, but I do not have either of these, so instead I use a 12 inch laser disc for this purpose with the rubber mat on the platter. The center hole in the laser disc is slightly smaller than one on a 7 inch single, but I still use an adapter to help me gauge when the laser disc is centered up. I then place the needle near the middle of the laser disc and adjust the anti-skate setting until the tone arm stays in position when the laser disc is spinning. In order to get the skate adjustment balanced, I had to set the anti-skating knob at 3.75 with a 1.25 tracking force. I learned this method from YouTuber V Westlife. A link to his channel is in the description. Proper phono cartridge alignment ensures accurate reproduction of your music and prevents unnecessary wear on your vinyl records. There are several tools to help achieve the proper alignment. The S-shaped tone arm on my turntable has the same specifications as the tone arm on a Techniques SL1200. So I purchased two products designed for the SL1200 to help me get the most accurate alignment possible an overhang gauge, and a protractor. The overhang gauge can be used to ensure that the distance from the head shell mount to the tip of the stylus is optimized. Loosen the screws on the head shell, position the stylus tip so that it sits over the very end of the overhang gauge, then tighten it back down. You can then use the stylus protractor to ensure that the stylus will be tangent to the record grooves at two optimized locations. I purchased a mirrored protractor, but tone arm specific templates can be downloaded from the internet and printed on your home printer to do the same thing. I currently own five different phono cartridges with styli that have diamonds ground to slightly different shapes. Mounting cartridges takes time and precision, but if you have a tone arm with a removable head shell, changing out head shells is easy. So for vinyl enthusiasts who like to try out different cartridges, I would suggest purchasing spare head shells and leave the cartridges mounted to them. Many modern receivers lack phono level inputs. If this is the case with your stereo, you'll need a phono preamplifier. These can range in price from $5 to $5,000 or more. The top end units are for turntables with moving coil cartridges but all of my cartridges are the moving magnet variety, so I do not need a high gain phono stage. I opted for an Art Accessories USB Phono Plus. All phono preamps convert a phono level signal into a line level signal, but this unit also has optical and coax digital outputs, a USB output for hooking up to a computer, as well as a headphone jack for monitoring. Also, it is switchable between phono level and line level, so line level sources can be converted to USB with the same device. It is important for your phono preamp to have a ground connection. Some low cost preamps lack this feature and consequently can introduce hum into the audio signal. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Thrifty AV also has a presence on Facebook and Twitter, so you can get announcements when I release new videos. Also, Thrifty AV has a Patreon account. Any small pledge will help keep Thrifty AV going. Thank you very much for watching.